can never be satisfied in your presence, God. Oh, may we never be satisfied. Jesus, God, I'm asking your consuming fire tonight to burn up old natures. Hey, I'm asking you to burn off the old wineskin tonight, Father God. I'm asking, Father God, for the religious behaviors to be burnt off tonight, Father God. I'm asking, Father God, for religious mindsets to be burnt off tonight, God. And I'm asking, Father God, for you to set your children free to worship you in spirit and truth tonight. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Oh, we worship you, O oh God. Would you send your fire now? God, would you burn us? May we be the sacrifice, Father God, that you're looking for tonight. Broken and spilled out. Yeah. Broken and spilled out. Shabbat We're broken and spilled out. Hey. Broken and spilled out. Hey, that's where God wants you. Broken and spilled out. I'm broken and spilled out. Hey, I'm broken and spilled out. Go ahead and present yourself to the Lord. I'm broken and spilled out. A living sacrifice unto God. I'm broken and spilled out. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. I'm broken and spilled out. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. I'm broken and spilled out. I'm broken and spilled out to be a broken, spilt out vessel before the Lord tonight. I'm broken and spilled out. Lord, I need a man of I'm broken and spilled out. I'm broken and spilled out. Hey, Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Broken and spilled out. Father God, here I am. We're presenting ourselves as living sacrifices before you. We're presenting ourselves, oh Father God, as vessels for you to pour in. Broken and spilled God, will you get to every heart tonight, Father? I'm asking that you penetrate every heart, God. I'm asking that you penetrate every heart right now in the name of Jesus. We know there's more. We know there's more. We know there's more. Get up and I'm on it or not. Be broken and spilled out. All of you, all of you, all of you, all of you give it to him. Broken and spilled out. All of you don't leave any part of who you are on the top of the altar. Broken and Present yourself as a living sacrifice on the altar of God right now. I'm broken. God, I have nothing in me but to surrender tonight. I'm broken and spilled out. Oh, no, my son, it, 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 it. I'm broken and spilled out. Father God, Father God, yeah. I'm broken and spilled out. Hey, I'm a son, I'm a boy, I'm a son. I'm broken and spilled out. Yes, Father. Yes, Father God. Get up, Father. Broken and 
give yourself to God. I'm broken and that's what you came in here for tonight, was to have an encounter with him. I break the curses right now. I break the curses right now. I break the curses right now. I break the curses that prevent you from worshiping God. I break the curses that prevent you from raising your voice before the Lord. I break the curses that prevent you from surrendering to God. I break the curses that tell you to be silent in his presence. I break the curses of pride that prevents you from coming into his presence. Father God, get on my thunder. I'm broken and filled up. I'm a sabbatada boy, I'm a kayak. Broken and filled up. Yeah. Hold up. I'm broken and filled up. I'm a sick I'm a sassada. I'm broken and filled up. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm a sick baba. And the Spirit of the Lord would desire to pour a new wine into you. Father God, remove the old wine skin off. Father, move the old wine skin. I'm asking, Father God, you remove old wine skins tonight. There's still some old wine skins, Father God. Lord, I'm asking you to remove them because you need to put new wine into these containers. So the traumas of the past, Father God, would you, oh Father God, put the sap of your presence, of your spirit on them right now. I'm asking, Father, the wounds of the past, Father God, would you begin to heal so they can be vessels used for your service, oh God. Father, I'm asking, oh Father God, minds that have been destroyed, hearts that have been broken. Father, would you mend? Would you restore? Would you heal? Will you build up? Father God, would you, oh God, reestablish? Father God, prepare the hearts of these people to receive the power of your glory and not hinder it and not remove your hand from wanting to bless them. Lord, I would ask tonight, oh Father God, that they would step into the presence of God and stop staying on the outside. Father God, I'm asking, oh Father, for you to prepare them to be a people abandoned in the presence of God, undone. Father God, that they will know how to worship you in spirit and truth. May their worship be truthful, God. May their hearts turn towards you and only you alone in this moment, God. So I'm asking, Holy Spirit, Apprehend every heart and mind right now. Apprehend every heart and mind right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Kora Sora Jesus. Kora mashe tarabo sutoro. Kora mashandarabo sutu. Shera masandarabo shekiaka. Sora mashandarabo sokura baha. Sera bashandarabo sokura masa. Sora mashia tarabo shekia kai. Kora masandarabo shuturo bosha. Sera mashokura basha kai. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to some of you, I have tried to love you and you've refused my love. To some of you, I have tried to extend my compassion if you refuse my compassion. And the spirit of the Lord would say to you, my love will always be as it was 
from the beginning and it will always be the same and I will not turn you away but I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying I want to love on my children but some have been so abused they've even turned me away from loving them but the Lord wants to do a healing I hear him just wanting to do a healing I hear the heart of God just aching for some of you tonight because you've been so abused and I just keep hearing God say the abuse of my children the abuse of my children and your hearts have been so abused your emotions have been so abused and you find it hard to worship him you find it hard to engage with him you find it hard to even stay in his presence you find it hard to stay attentive to him you're always looking for an out because you're uncomfortable staying in that presence of love but the spirit of the lord would say if you allow me to pour out my love on you my perfect love will remove all the fears all the anxieties father god i'm asking you to heal the hearts of your people right now I'm asking you to restore, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking that they can truly sing, my beloved. And really mean what it says, my beloved. This is the cry of some of your hearts tonight. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. You, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. 
is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you, Father God, all I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you, yeah, that's your song. That's all you need. All I need is you, Lord. Yeah, Father. You, Lord. All I need is you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. That's all you need. That's it. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. That's all you need. That's all you need. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you, yeah. All I need is you, Lord, just let it be your prayer. All I need is you, sure not a all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Thank you, Father God, that we may be desperate for the presence of God, that we may be desperate for the Spirit of God, that we may be desperate for the encounter with God. Because all we need is Him. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just him. Kira mm basata. -hmm. Phil, do you want to come right up here? Mm -hmm. Is you, Lord? All I need is you. Just face me. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you, mm. all I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need, Jesus. It's taken you a season to get to where you are, the Lord said. And there has been so much turmoil in your life. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying you have fought continually. You fought, it just felt like your whole life, all you was doing was fighting. And it broke you into many pieces. And God said, I saw the pieces fall. I saw what it did to you. 
But the Lord is saying to you today, Phil, what you've been desperate for to just be abandoned in his presence, to be able to worship him. The Lord is saying today, it's your day. That no longer will you feel afraid to worship. No longer will you feel afraid to be abandoned in the presence of God. But you've been crying out to him and saying, God, would you just shift me? I'm done with me. It's, it's tiring just being me. And the Lord is saying, Phil, Philip, Philip, I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you in the very darkest places, in the most loneliest of places. But he's saying today, I'm breaking you out of the imprisonment that you've been in the torment that you've gone through, the condemnation the enemy has weighed you down with, the guilt the enemy has filled you with. And you came in tonight, the Lord said he came in tonight saying, you got to do it tonight, God. So the spirit of the Lord would say to you, I'm restoring what the enemy has devoured and all that the canker worm has taken from you. There has not been one area of your life, the Lord says, that the enemy has not come and stolen from. And it just felt like it was repeated over and over. Like an abusive woman that just keeps getting battered. But tonight the Lord is saying, I'm breaking off and my, my presence on your life is about to shift your destiny. You will no longer hide in the shadows, I hear God say. You will no longer be silent. You will no longer be afraid. That spirit of fear, the spirit of self-condemnation. The Lord is saying, I'm breaking it off tonight. I'm done with the torment that it has had on you. And the Lord is saying, you cried out and you thought it was impossible for me to reach you. But my hand is not short, Philip. My hand was never short to you. But tonight I'm healing the brokenness of your heart. Because the Lord showed it to me in so many pieces. It's been in pieces. It's been in pieces. But the Lord is saying tonight I'm bringing it back. And I'm restoring your heart and I'm giving you a new heart. I'm giving you a heart of courage. I'm giving you a heart of strength. I'm giving you a heart to be a warrior and you will be heard and no longer will the enemy silence your voice to tell you you're not heard and you're not loved and you're not accepted no longer will he wrap you up imprisoned in yourself but the spirit of the lord would say tonight i am breaking you free of the prison bars and the chains and the shackles for they have been many they have been shackles upon shackles they they have been prison doors closed upon prison doors but tonight the lord is saying is there anything impossible for me to do in your life but i will restore to you what the enemy robbed you of i will restore back and give you back joy unspeakable I see God placing in in your care. I see him placing in your care. Wow. My God, I see him putting in your care things that you thought you would never be able to manage. That you felt like I, I could do that, but if God just gave me the courage, I would be able to. But I see the Lord putting gifts in your hands. I see him literally putting gifts in your hands that have been stored up for you, Phil, that the enemy kept you from. And the Lord is saying they're yours now. They're yours. You have permission to open what I've given you. You have permission to open them and enjoy them in this season. So, Father, I'm asking you to restore his heart. Please restore his heart, God. You are a restorer of the broken. Restore his heart, God. 
the abuse that he's been through, God, for years, God, I'm asking, would you heal it, Father God? Would you heal him now, God? The turmoil and the torment, God, the isolation, Father. I'm asking that you begin to heal right now, Lord God. I'm asking for a new man. We don't want him walking out the way he came in. But Father God, I'm asking you to restore back what the enemy stole. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And freedom. And freedom. And freedom to just be. And freedom to just be. And freedom to just be. For the Lord has said, what I created in you was perfect. And the struggles that you have been through internally, the struggles of insecurity because you thought you were not smart enough. The Lord says, I'm going to show you what my wisdom will do for you. Because you will have answers for those that come to you. And I give you the boldness to speak it. The Lord wants you to know you were not a mistake and you were not a failure, but you were purposed. And the enemy has seen the purpose on your life and has kept you in prison to keep you from your purpose. But tonight, the Spirit of the Lord would say, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. In Jesus' name. All over him, Father God, right now, would you heal everything? Heal everything, God. Heal all of it, God. Heal all of it. Heal all of him, God. Heal his mind, God, so things will start to click and make sense now, God. Heal his mind, Father God, where it won't feel so scattered at times. Heal his mind. So he won't feel so confused at times. Heal his mind. And I rebuke the spirit of loneliness off of you right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of loneliness and isolation that the enemy has placed on you. I break that off of you in the name of Jesus. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. Kera mashaka. Father, I'm asking you to make him a new man today in the name of Jesus. And Father, I'm asking right now, would you anoint him with a new anointing and a baptism again? There it is. In the name of Jesus. I'm declaring the joy of the Lord now. No more turmoil in your head. No more confusion. No more confusion. No more confusion. That's what I hear the Lord saying to tell you. No more confusion. And no more depression. No more confusion and no more depression. No more confusion and no more depression. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. In the name of Jesus, be gone. In Jesus' name, be gone. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is, Phil. There it is. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, I'm asking you to seal what you're doing in him right now. Father God, I'm asking you to break off every chain the enemy has had him bound in for years, God. Restore back to him, Father God. Restore back to him what the enemy has stolen, Lord God. This is his season now, God. This is his season now, God. 
This is his hour now, God. This is his moment now, God. Father God, fill him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet with an new anointing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God, for freedom. Thank you that you came to set the captive free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Why don't you stand with me, please? Jesus. Sure, I'm not on board on Hallelujah. Jesus. And I keep hearing God say a spirit of confusion. I, I don't know who it is, but there's a great amount of confusion that your walk with God is you're confused. And I don't know who that is. I don't know who you are, that you need to be free from that. You need deliverance from confusion because you're constantly confused and, and you even question if the things that you've heard about God or the things you've read, even you question it, you're confused and the enemy has you spinning around going, maybe it's not God. You don't even really know what is truth because you're so confused. And I believe the Lord wants to deliver you tonight from that. Because the enemy has got your mind all wrapped up in confusion. I know who that is, but if you need to come up right now, we want to pray with you. You're just, you're, it's a fogginess in your mind. One day you're good, the next day you're not. And it feels like some kind of a depression, but it's confusion. You're just constantly confused. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Whoever that is that you need, your mind just cleared. Said I'm not a mortal, my Jesus. Lord, I'm not a Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. I just want you to know the Lord wants you healed. The Lord wants you healed because he wants you to be able to worship him. And I'm okay to wait and so is God. That's what you came in here for is to be ministered to. So Father God, I'm asking that spirit of fear that would keep any, whoever that is, Father God, just to bring them forward, Lord, so we can have them delivered. No more the torments of, un of confusion in your mind. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Mm. I still hear the Lord saying there's somebody else. There's still somebody else. And it's just confusion. You are your your brain, your mind is not clear. It's not clear all the time. And you, you go, you flip flop. You just flip flop in thoughts. Shit, I'm a sakad of this shit, kid. Shit, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now. In Jesus' name, Father God, I'm asking, oh Lord God, that you would put a shield around her mind. I'm asking, Father God, that you would restore back her thoughts, oh Father God. I'm asking, oh Father God, the spirit of confusion would be broken off of her, Father God. I'm asking, oh Father God, that you would anoint her mind, oh Father God. You would anoint her mind, oh Father God to be restored back to you, Lord God, that she's not flip-flopping in the way she thinks. In Jesus' name. Father, I'm asking you to break off that curse that has been on her thoughts, that has bound her thoughts, oh, Father God. So she can't even really worship you, Father. 
because she's confused on how she should be worshiping. So I'm asking you to break that right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father God, to set her mind, oh Father God, at ease right now in the name of Jesus. And the thoughts that the enemy has put in her mind, I'm asking you to remove them, Lord God. Would you apprehend her thoughts? Teach her, oh Father God, how to cast down imaginations and thoughts that have lifted themselves up and brought confusion. I'm asking you now to shut doors that she even opened to bring those thoughts in. Shut those doors, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't know. I still hear the Lord saying there's somebody else. That's your, you just, whatever it is you're struggling with, with your mind, it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. It's like a constant battle. You need to come up to be prayed for. Because the enemy is so loud in your head. It come right up. Come right up here. Just, just wake up. Jesus. So, Father, we anoint him with oil on his forehead. Because, Father God, I believe that what you're going to do is restore his mind. You're going to restore his identity in his mind. The voices that torment him, Father God, night and day, silence in the name of Jesus. No more, God. But tell him one thing when it's the opposite. Voices, oh, Father God, but make him believe that he's inadequate. He's not enough to do what you called him to do. Shh. Lord, I'm asking, oh, Father God, that you would restore his mind. Restore his mind back, Father. I'm declaring, may that which was imprisoned in your thoughts be let go. Be free in Jesus' name. I'm asking for the blood of Jesus over his thoughts right now, Father God to sanctify his mind, sanctify his mind, sanctify his mind. Make it a place of holiness unto you, God. May within his thoughts be the word of God and songs and praises unto you, God. May, oh Father God, the, the voices, oh Father, that he now hears is the voice of God that speaks to him and only that voice. Give him the strength to cast out, oh Father God, those voices that would try and torment him, that would try and tell him and entertain him, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, apprehend every sound of a voice that is not yours in his head. Apprehend it and silence it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah, Father. Wow. Like God has given you an overhaul. The Spirit of the Lord would say to you, people, sit down. The Spirit of the Lord would say that I am restoring breach walls in your life. And the Lord is saying that I'm rebuilding you in every way in your life. Every area of your life is being rebuilt. And the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, there is not going to be a recognition of who you are because the old man is gone. And the Lord is saying that I'm going to cause you to be a fire in your generation and a flame in your community. And I hear God saying on you, they will look at you and say, is this the same young man that we once knew? But the identity that God is restoring, every part of you, I see God restoring. Every part of who you are, your identity, your speech, your attitude, your thoughts is shifting suddenly. The Lord just wants you to know that he isn't just doing pieces. This is a whole thing that he's doing on you. It's not pieces. It's the, a complete overhaul that he's doing on you. Father God, would you seal all that you're doing in his life, Father? The suddenlies, may they be suddenly, Father. Shift in everything in this hour in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. 
Jesus. Ah. Jesus. Jesus. All of it. I can feel it rolling around inside of your belly that what God is doing. He is shifting you drastically. Old things are being removed. Even right now, the Lord is removing them out of you. Everything be gone in the name of Jesus. That was the old man. Be gone in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In G- I cast out every single spirit that has oppressed him in the past. In the name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' name. Restore back his mind to you. Restore his body. Restore all of him, Father God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Father God. And I declare the baptism of the Holy Spirit all over again, Father God, on his life, Father. Wow, Shokora Masai in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ora Masera Maya. Gora Madana. Watch your feet. Wow. <laughs> Just watch your feet, because I I can see what what's on you. <laughs> I can see what's on you, but the Lord wants to tell you, don't resist it. Don't resist it, because you've guarded yourself even from God in the past, and the Lord wanted to do so much in your life that you guarded yourself. And the Lord is saying, if you would surrender everything to me, I'm going to shift everything for you. What you couldn't do on your own, I'm going to do it for you. It is safe to be in the presence of God. It's safe for you to be in the presence of God and be abandoned in his presence. Thank you, Father God. Seal what you've done in him. We thank you, God, for this young man. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. We thank you that he's going to be a testimony to a nation. A testimony to a nation. All of him. God's not done with him. He thinks he's done, but God's not done with him. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Phil, get ready for a spirit of joy that's about to come over you. (laughs) I I mean, like, right now. I'm talking about right now. Get, get ready, wow, get ready for a spirit of laughter to get over you because you haven't laughed in years, God said. Get ready for it right now, right now. I'm speaking that over you right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name, God, give it to him. All of it to him, God. All of it, <laughs> right there, right now, God. A spirit of joy and laughter all over him, God. Set him free, God to worship you father to fully there it is <laughs> there it is there it is phil yeah there it is there it is there it is there it is go ahead there it is father god fill him to overflow you said you want him to feel it father god you want him to be consumed in your presence so overflow 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 right now Overflow, 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 overflow. Father God, all of him, God. A spirit of joy. In the, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. There it is. Father, don't stop. Don't stop, God. He's been waiting for years for this, Lord. 
He's been waiting for years for you to do this, Lord God. Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. There it is. There it is. Kera Masanda Nabohora. Joy unspeakable, I declare it over you. Joy unspeakable, I declare it over you. Joy unspeakable, I declare it over you. Joy unspeakable. The half has not been told what God is about to pour in you, young man. The half has not been told what God has set you free from tonight. The past is the past, the Lord is saying. You're about to move into your season of deliverance and freedom and joy. In Jesus' name. Wow, there it is. Yes, God, give it to him, all of it. The spirit of laughter, I'm decreeing that over you right now. There it is. You better not hold it back because you can feel it. Roll it up. God, do what needs to be done and let it come out of him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. All over him. Ha! There it is. There it is. Thank you, Lord. There it is, God. Oh my God. Thank you, Father, for this young man's life. Thank you for what you're doing in him right now. Jesus. Whoa. Oh. And joy and laughter. Uncontrollable. I declare that on you right now in Jesus' name. All over you right now in Jesus' name. And I speak to your feet in the name of Jesus that you will learn to dance again in the presence of God. That you will learn to dance again in the presence of God. That you will dance uncontrollable in the presence of God. Abandoned in the presence of God. Holy Spirit all over him. Douse him with what you've got on him, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. All over him right now in Jesus' name. Everybody stand. Come on, you need to celebrate. God is freeing this man right now. Jesus, Jesus, you need to dance for him right now. Somebody needs to dance to make it declare. Oh, thank you, Father God. Freedom. Wow. My God. Go. Jesus. <laughs> God came for you tonight, Phil. It was about you tonight. Go. My God. I need to show you a mirror to show you what you look like. You do not look like the same man that we know. I didn't even know you had dimples. Wow. Did you see the transformation just happen? I don't know. Oh my goodness, Phil. Wow. God came to set you free tonight. He came, you're free, you're done, it's over. The torment's over, Phil. The years of torment is over. You can dance now. You can raise your hands and praise now. It's free. You're free. You're free to worship. You're free to dance. You're free to be joyful. 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 You're free. You're free. My God. Jesus. Wow. I felt the lightness come off. I felt that thing go and lift right off of you. I felt it. Yeah, I felt <laughs> You could fly if you had wings right about now, couldn't you? Wow, did you feel that? You've been bound up for years. Tonight, God set you free. Wow. Wow, Phil. 
God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Woo. You're going to go home and throw out a whole bunch of stuff. God's starting you brand new. Wow. Phil, your whole countenance just shifted in front of us. Jesus, who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. Wow. Thank you, Father God, for loving us the way you love us. Thank you for setting us free when we're bound up and the enemy has had us bound up for prisons for years. God's not done with you. Can I just tell you that? God's not done with you. And this needs to be a testimony. Phil, what did you just experience? I don't know. <laughs> Did you feel that thing just lift? Like, because I felt it just like, if, yeah, it just like, like a balloon just lifted off of you. That what you were carrying for years, Phil, in the moment God will heal and transform a life. Wow, we better just get ready for what is coming out of this young man. Jesus. Wow. My God, I'm impressed with God. I am. I'm impressed with God. You, that's the only clapping you're giving your God? I'm impressed with him. I'm impressed with the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Who else needs to be free tonight? Who else needs to be free? Don't be ashamed to be saying, I need freedom. Don't let the enemy keep you bound up and go, I, I just say, I, I need to be free. I've been bound up in some thoughts and lifestyles and behaviors that I can't get out of. I feel like I'm a gerbil in a wheel and all I keep doing is spinning, 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 spinning. You need to be free of whatever it is. God wants you free. He wants you free. If you want to be free, just come up here at any point. We'll pray for you. You don't even have to wait for me to invite you. You get up here, we'll know what to do. Amen. Who else needs to be free? Anna, come on. That confusion thing has really been bugging me. Okay. Come on. Just say something there. Please, guys, come around here. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Father God, I'm asking you to set her thoughts free, Lord God, where the enemy has spoken to her and lied to her and tried to bring confusion of the plans that you have for her, the destiny that you have for her. Father God, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, set her mind free to worship you, to be free, oh Father God, in liberty, Father, a hey, shot and unable. There it is, there it is, there it is. Thank you, Father God, for freedom. Thank you for the confidence of God that's in her, Father God, to know who she is, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, all of her, all of her, Father God, no more confusion. No more confusion in the name of Jesus. No more confusion in the name of Jesus. Here my son, none of all. So from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I declare the anointing of God all over your life right now and a newness, a newness in the name of Jesus of what God has declared over you is a yes and amen, is a declaration of freedom. And I'm declaring the dance over you. I'm declaring the dance over you also because you've been saying, God, I want to dance. I want to dance. You've been asking God for that. You've been saying, God, I want to know how to dance. And you keep saying to God, I got two left feet. The Lord told me, you've said that to him. I got two left feet. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to show you how to dance in my presence. I'm going to set you free to dance in my presence. No more bondage. No more bondage. But you will be set free to dance in the presence of the Lord. The freedom of dancing, God. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh. In the name of Jesus, Father God, give it to her, Father God. Set her free to worship you, God. 
Kera Masande Rebekia. In Jesus' name, give her the dance, God. Give her the dance, God. Give her the dance, God. Gora Masande Rebekia. Shora Masande Rebekia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shara Masakara Rebekia. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Shora Masande Rebekia. Give her the dance, God. Give her the dance, oh Father God, because she's been asking you for it, God. She's been asking you, God, would you help me to dance in your presence? Give her the dance, God, so she can worship you in freedom. Jesus, in Jesus' name, yeah, yeah, overwhelming joy in the clear, I declare that in the dance over you. I declare the dance over you, Anna. I declare the dance. I declare the dance of David. I declare the dance of worship. I declare the dance of freedom. I declare the dance of God all over you. I declare the dance of God all over you. Set her free to dance, God. Set her free to dance in you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hey, yeah, yeah. There it is. Go ahead. There it is. There it is. There it is. Kora masakhe. Robo sama baba na 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 de na 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 na. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Kora kora masaburi e re na na. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Liberty of God, I declare that. I declare the liberty of God all over you. I declare the liberty of God all over you. Hey, set her free to dance, God. She's been asking for it. Set her free to dance, God. Freedom. I'm declaring the dance all over her. Yes, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost all over this woman of God. The dance, 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 the dance. Oh, the dance, the dance. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, freedom to dance. Freedom to dance. Freedom to dance. Go ahead. Freedom to dance. Freedom to dance. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The freedom to dance. Oh, you're gonna dance today. Go ahead, Father God. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. All over her. In the name of Jesus, God. Come on, let's worship. Begin to worship God. Begin to worship God. Come on. Hallelujah, God. Free, God. 
I have. Yeah, that you've just been saying, I want to, I want to dance. Yeah, and I've had visions of it and twirling and like worshiping <laughs> God in the kingdom. But it's always just been in my head before. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> so this was your first time dancing? Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just love my God. Because I don't know what you need. Just ask him for it. Could you dare to ask him for it and watch him do it? She just wanted to dance. And I kept hearing the Lord saying, she just wants to dance. So I'm giving you the freedom to dance. So it's yours. You can keep dancing for the rest of your life now before the presence of God. Amen. Give God praise, guys. Anybody else need something? Come on, the water's troubled. You need to be, come on. Just stretch your hands, please, towards this lady. Just for this I'm speaking to brokenness. I'm speaking to brokenness. It's okay, that they can, someone else can hold it for you. I'm speaking to brokenness in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God to mend the brokenness, to heal the brokenness. Um, because it's been shattered pieces in so far directions that um, you can't even find those broken pieces. But the Lord wants to restore. So, Father God, I'm asking you to bring healing, Father God. I'm asking you to bring healing of her heart over things that have been done to her by those the closest to her. That has shattered her, Father God. That has left her, Father God, unable to really trust too many. And the Lord is saying you, it's, it's very hard for you to trust anyone. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to restore and let you know that I'm a God who you can trust. You can trust me. And he's going to restore the brokenness that you felt for years. And unfortunately, it was those that were very close to you, the Lord is saying, that broke you. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to restore and give you the ability to trust again. Because you need to trust me that I will take care of you. And the Lord would say to you, I'm going to cause those things that you thought could never be fixed, I'm going to fix them. And relationships that are so far gone, I hear God saying, I'm going to restore them. Because it's really broken you that those relationships are gone. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to restore them. Give me time to heal you first, and then I will bring those ones back. But the Lord is saying, trust me in this season. 
Trust me for the healing. Trust me for the things you've asked me for. I am a faithful God to you. And the Spirit of the Lord would say, I will not fail you. Because many have, but I will not fail you. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, when you ask me, believe I've done it. Because you ask me and you don't believe that I can do it. But the Lord is saying, when you ask me, believe I've done it. So I just speak right now in the name of Jesus. Father, would you heal the brokenness? Restore the trust. Restore the trust in the name of Jesus. Because that's the big thing. She just doesn't, she doesn't trust anybody, really. But I'm asking you to restore her trust with you, God. Would you heal the brokenness? Heal the brokenness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's okay. We won't use it. In the name of Jesus. I'm just speaking to some of the areas in your life that God is saying is, is, is so bound. I need to, we need to set you free. We need to set you free of so many areas that has been bound out. Father God, would you begin to strip off those things, Lord God. Strip them off. Begin to strip them off, Lord God. Begin to strip them off, Father. I'm asking for healing. I'm asking for healing, God, so this woman can begin to worship you, fully worship you. Not afraid to worship you, but fully worship you. I'm asking for you to give her an intimacy with you that she hasn't been able to experience. But I'm asking, oh, Father, would you reward her for her faithfulness to keep pushing through, even though sometimes she didn't feel you, she still kept pushing through. I'm asking you to just reward her for that. And would you bring back, oh Father God, that which has been stolen and mend that which has been broken. So in Jesus' name, I thank you for the healing process that has begun in this woman's heart, in her mind. You're fully accepted, God wants me to tell you. You're fully accepted. You're fully accepted. All of you, you're accepted. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch him do it, okay? Watch him do it. Process. Amen. Come right up. Come on. I want you guys to listen. When I'm praying for someone, don't, don't spectate. You need to grab. Because some of you won't come up, but you know you need something. So I want you to, and celebrate with what God is doing in them and also grab what you want, right? Grab what you need in the, in the, it isn't, we, we're not spectating. We, we want to watch what God is doing, but we want to celebrate in what God is also doing, right? Amen. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. I heard the Lord saying to tell you, because um, you've been wondering, am I going to be alone forever? Because that's been bothering you. Because you think, am I going to be alone forever? Like, what am I going to actually be able to be in the company and not have to be alone all the time? And that's been really bothering you, that you felt alone. Even though you might have people, but you feel like, I'm, I'm, I'm alone. Why, when is it going to be my turn? And the Lord wants you to know that he's first your husband. Then. He's your first love. And he wants to touch your heart in that place that you feel that you are alone. And he's going to heal it. And he's going to let you feel the overwhelming love that that you sometimes feel like I don't have because I need a physical person there. But God's going to teach you in this next season that he's going to be more than enough. And that loneliness that you keep feeling, because it's a lot. It's, it's huge. It's big because the Lord just let me see how big it is. It's big. 
But God says, I will not leave you or forsake you. And I'm with you. So I speak to that spirit of loneliness in the name of Jesus. That spirit that, that wants to cripple her, that makes her feel that she's been forgotten and she's never going to have a season of joy, of joy. But I speak to that right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, would you fill her with joy? Would you fill her with contentment? Would you fill her with fulfillment? Would you fill her with overflowing, oh Father, of your presence? I'm asking, oh Father, you remove that off of her in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Wow. Oh, that was like peace overflowing. Wow. Wow, did I feel that. Oof. <laughs> I literally felt that. That would filled me up like overflow. That was the peace of God that you just felt. Did you feel that? Did you feel that? You felt like he hugged you. I it just felt like I literally felt that. It was like peace, like just like huge peace. Jesus. Wow. Wow. Broken heart be mended in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's well with my soul is what I hear the Lord saying you need to say. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Yeah, it is well with my soul. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. No more spirit of loneliness. No more feeling of loneliness. Yeah. Your season is coming. But right now, he's just going to court you and love on you. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. That's like a lightness, like a peace, like just, I don't even know if I can describe what I just felt. There was peace that you were praying for. That's what you came up here for. Oh, okay. Well, that's what you got. <laughs> I didn't know that's what you came up here for, but that's what he wanted you to know. Is wow. Yeah. Thank you, Father God. Wow. Ah. I still feel in that. It's just so light. Jesus. Jesus' name. Oliver. Oliver. Now saturate her with the love of God that she knows. Father God, that she is yours and you are hers. And you're her beloved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Settle the peace, all of it, in her. That's what she came for. Wow. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's all over her, Jesus, yeah, my God, wow, it is like a, sh it's like a, uh, Mindy painted a, 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 a robe and that's what I feel was just put over you. And it's still, it's just resting on you, but it's not a heavy robe. It just feels like a feather, but we've, it's been placed on you. Yeah, he's more than enough in everything you need. Amen. Amen. Who else? Come on, David, come on. If some of you are going, is this all we're doing tonight? Well, if that's what the Holy Ghost wants, that's all we're doing.
Hallelujah, Father God. Jesus. I hear God saying to tell you, timing is everything. Timing is everything. And the Lord wants you to be very detailed about timing. Because if you miss the time, it's going to take a whole season before it comes back again. The Lord is talking to you about being very uh, particular about time. I keep hearing him saying time. Tell him to watch the time. Tell him to watch the time. He doesn't want you to be late for what he's calling you to do. And he doesn't want you to have anything delay you in the next assignment. And you've been asking him for when do I actually make this new move that I need to make? And the Lord is saying, wait for his time. I don't know if it's with work or with whatever it is, but you want to make a move and, the Lord, and you're asking, is it now? Is it now? Is it now? And the Lord is saying, it's about time. It's timing. But he doesn't want you to go ahead and just do it because it's even there for you. Because I think there's opportunities that are presented to you, but you're just going, do I do it now? It's, they're going to be there when it's the timing of the Lord. But don't rush it because you think, it is right before you, so you must need to take it. The Lord wants you to be careful with the timing because he's ordering things into your future that he needs you to be very particular about this very time that you don't walk ahead of him. So the Lord is saying to tell you, stay in pace. Stay in pace with where he has you and be very deliberate to ask him for the time when you should shift. I don't know, is it work that you're about, you try to, is it work? Is it, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, you're waiting for God to tell you exactly when. Yeah, is that what you're asking him for? Tell me exactly when, because I hear clarity, like I want to know exactly when. Yeah, yeah, you're waiting on him. Don't do it until you hear him, okay? Because it is about time. That's what God is saying to tell you. Be very deliberate with the time that you're waiting for okay so father we thank you lord god i ask that you don't let him hurry ahead of you and don't let him go behind you but lord god i ask oh father god that you would order his steps that when in the fullness of time he'll know when it is and he'll step into it and he won't delay and he'll see the hand of god father god don't let the enemy convince him to rush ahead of you so in jesus name father god bring clarity to the season and the times that he's in. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, yeah, amen, amen, come on, hallelujah, yeah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, why don't we just stand for communion? Matt, Matt, would you like to do communion for me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Amen. Wow. This is just the first service here. <laughs> Hope you're all coming next week. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's just stay in this moment as we uh, just take these emblems and just remember uh, the work that God has done on the cross for us, just the significance um, that we have as we take this. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your body that was broken for us, God, that has set us free. Lord, that we didn't have to become slaves any longer to sin. We didn't have to, to live under our old mindsets, our own ideas, but that we are free through the power of the cross and the work that you did. So, Father, we choose to remember now, God, as we take this bread, we thank you, Father, that your body was broken for us. You were wounded for our transgressions, God. We thank you for the minds that you set free tonight, Lord. We remember this, God. We even ask that you would seal this work in our own hearts through the taking of these symbols, Lord. So we take the bread now, God, and we remember what you've done for us. 
Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you, Father, Lord, for the power that was released through your blood being spilt. And God, that none of us are deserving of it, but you still chose to send your son to die on a cross for us, Lord. And nothing that we could do, none of our righteousness, God, could ever be worthy of that price. But you paid that ultimate price for us. And we thank you, Father. And we remember that now. Jesus. Take a moment and remember that. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to remember what your Savior did for you on that cross. Mm -hmm. And let the weight of that rest on you. Father, we take this cup now. Lord, and we partake of it. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. We thank you, God, that your blood is enough. It's enough to cover us, Lord. It's enough for us to walk and to leave our old ways. It's enough for us to launch forward into what you have for us, God, that there's no going back after tonight. There's no going back to our old mindsets. There's no going back to those old ideas, those old habits. It changes tonight, God. Lord, we draw a line in the sand. Tonight, there's a shift. Tonight, there's a change. Lord, we remember tonight, God, that it started here. Lord, that you marked each and every one of us. Lord, that you have a calling and a purpose for each and every one of us. Lord, let us not go back. Lord, even this week when the enemy wants to come and remind us, oh, nothing really happened. Lord, we're just going to rebuke that right now. Father, we are moving forward. Every week we are gathering momentum, just like a train that starts to move on the tracks. It takes a little while to get going, but tonight, God, the engines are turning. Lord, we're beginning to gather momentum. Father, that every month, every week, God, we are going to gather momentum, Lord, as we continue to shift. We continue to shift and to push into a new season, Father, of what you're leading us into. So we remember, God, that all of this started because of your work on the cross. So we thank you for that, Father, and we remember you. Thank you, Father. Let's take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Why don't you give God praise? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, give him praise. has done and it is marvelous in our sight isn't it isn't it wow god you're so good welcome to rake dominion amen thank you everyone for being here as this is our first time in this location it's going to be our first time uh on saturdays um we we believe that god is going to bring a revival out of these Saturday nights. Who wants a revival? Okay, so I want you to, I want you, you all put your hand up, right? Who wants a revival? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I want you to look, because you just put your hands up. You need to understand what I'm about to say. You are going to start the revival, every hand that's raised. Because it's going to start with you first. We're not waiting for someone to do a revival. It's going to start with me, God. 
So I see hands that have been extended. And as God is looking down right now from heaven, he's saying, I see the hands. I see the hands. So you just, like a child in school, put your hand up and say, I'm here. Here I am, teacher. I got the answer. I got the solution for it. That's you just taking an oath with God. I will be the revival in the nation. I will bring the revival in the nation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember what you just did. Because when you make a vow to God, do not go back on it. <laughs> Welcome, guys. I'm so glad that you're all here tonight. Thank you. Um, this is going to be our new location uh, until we get our building. Right? This is where we're going to be. This is where we're going to be worshiping on Saturday nights. I want you to invite as many people because this is going to be a night where it's going to be a, a, a revival night where we're going to do ministry. Some nights I probably won't even be able to give a word because I really hear and sense that the Lord is just going to move. And we're going to see that happening. So I want you to come with the anticipation, get ready. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Don't know what's going to happen tonight. I'm believing that we're going to see healings. I'm believing that we're going to see manifestations of angels. I'm believing for all of that. And I want you to believe with me. I want you to believe with me. I want you to believe with me, right? Because if you believe for it, God will do it. It just takes you believing. Okay, so I want you to believe with me for the power of God that we're going to experience on Saturday nights. We're calling it fire revival, a revival fire. Invite people that just need an encounter with God. You saw transformations happen tonight. Did you not? Okay. We want the body of Christ healed. Right? We want you healed so you can worship. We want the body of Christ available for when God says, I'm looking for my army, that you're ready. So I want every one of you to be in a place where you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. So now you can be fierce warriors. So every Saturday night right here, we're going to start at 6 p.m. with prayer, open prayer. I want to welcome you to come. Listen, winter's coming. What else are you going to be doing? Right? Seriously, winter's coming, so you're not, you have nothing else to do, right? The shops are going to be closing anyways, and it's going to save you money if you come to church on Saturday night rather than going to Chinook, right? So you might as well come and, and shop. Come with no silver, no gold, and buy. Amen? And once you go home full, you will go home full. So we welcome you here. My name's Dion. I'm the Apostle Prophet in this house. Um, our team that's with me, uh, all these guys here in the front, and here on the stage as part of the ministry team here. And we're just believing for God to do a revival in our nation. And we want it to start here. Why not? Why not? I'm, I believe that in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see this place full because God's Holy Spirit is going to blow them in. That's who's going to do it. Because when they hear what God is doing, they'll want to come. And we want them to come, right? because we want the revival in our nation. So invite friends with you, um, invite family with you, and come expecting. Can you come expecting? Six o'clock, seven o'clock will be service and we'll go right into service. Um, I just wanted to share uh, just a couple, just really quickly. I'm not gonna take long because we spent time ministering. Um, but this series for this month is called Serve or Be Served. Serve or Be Served. What does that mean? I want you to go with me to, uh, to the book of Matthew. Because you're going to serve or you're going to be served. And I want you to go to Matthew 25, I believe. Matthew 25. I'm just going to pull it up here. And then in this, in this story in Matthew chapter 25, it talks about the servant. And we're going to be doing a focus on this throughout the whole month of um, September. Because God is looking for servants that he can call to do work for him. And in this story, 
we're we're introduced into the talents that are given out to the three we know there's 10 but we only hear about the first three okay because we stop after the third one because he wanted to make a point to teach you something but it goes in let's just start at verse 14 i'll start real from here for it will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusts to them his property to one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his ability then he went away he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more so also he who had the two talents made two talents more but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them and he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you, de you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. You know, there's a scripture in Revelation that talks about, it says, when you meet him, he will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. This servant is, is receiving that reward for taking care of what his master gave to him. This is really a, a, a parable of what is going to happen when you stand before God. It's not just here on earth, but it's what you're going to stand before God. And he'll say, what did you do with what I gave you? Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. Okay. It goes on to say, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. Um, it goes into verse 22. And he also and he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. It's interesting because the one with ten, that made ten in total and the one that made four in total, they're good servants. Not because one gave, made five more, you go, Oh, you're better. To the amount that was given, they still multiplied. It was still multiplication, right? They doubled it. Because some of you will look at each other and go, well, she's doing more than me. And you're not satisfied just to use the two that you've been given and multiply it and make four. So what do you do? You do what this next guy does. In verse 24, he also, he also, he who also had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Not my talent, but your talent. Reminds you, each one of you, that what you have is not yours. It belongs to God. And he hid your talent in the ground here you have what is yours. But his master answered him and said, and said to him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my, what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the 10 talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he who has abundance, and he will have an abundance, sorry. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God says in verse 20 is where I want to go back to. And he who had received the five talents came forward and he multiplied it and he gave it back to the master. He who had received the two talents came forward and he had multiplied it and he gave it to the master. He had received the, he who had received the one talent came forward. He had not multiplied it. And the master was cross, deeply cross with him and literally rebuked him and cast him out. That is what the word of God, that story that you hear when you come before Christ, that there will be some that he's going to cast out from his presence. You won't make it in. And what's going to get you into heaven is being a servant. 
We can easily say, no, I just need to serve God and do nothing else but serve God. What does the volume of serving God mean? It means to serve whatever is God's. It isn't just going, I go to church. That's not serving God. That's being the one with the one. You've got it, but you're not letting it increase. To serve God, you must serve others. You cannot say I'm a servant of the most high God and all you're doing is coming to church. It doesn't work. You will stand before him and he'll say, what did you do with what I gave you? I gave you salvation. I redeemed your soul. I supplied your needs. What did you do with it? You just sat and enjoyed it and said, well, I'm just going to be a good Christian. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to wave to everybody. And, and how you doing? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And then I'm going to walk out really nicely and go home. And I'm going to just live a different life after I leave church. And then I'm going to show up again. And week after week, Sunday after Sunday, you do this. And the Lord is saying, you're a wicked servant. That's a hard word, right? But that's what he said. You're a wicked servant. Because you're not even taking what he has put in you to increase it. I know some of you are going, but I don't even know how to increase what I got. I don't even know what I got. Well, I can tell you what you've all got. You all have the ability to speak. God has blessed you abundantly with so many wealthy things in life, but you keep it to yourself. And the Lord didn't give it to you for you to keep it. He gave it to you for you to give it. To whom much is given, much is required. You've been given salvation. That's much. That's literally an eternal inheritance. That is wealth. There are people in your family member you don't even want to talk to about God because you're like, don't worry about it. Those are the people you need to keep talking to. Those are people you need to keep sending scriptures to. But you would say, I don't have anything. Then he will cast you out. We're living in a season right now where the Lord is saying, I'm looking for those that will serve me, really serve me, not be Christians. Because we like the title, I'm a Christian, but are you a servant? What does that look like? It looks like me reaching out to those that don't know Christ. It looks like me serving the people in the house. It looks like me being available when God says, shift, move, give. Be available. Go serve somebody. I'm too busy. I got all these children. I'm too busy. I've got a job and a house. Who gave you the job and the house and the children? Don't you think he knows you can manage all of that or else he wouldn't have given it to you? So you can't use that as an excuse because he gave you what you have. So he expects you to enjoy what he's given you and serve. For whom much is given, much is more required. The word of God says in Romans 13, 13, that we tend to gratify the flesh more than we do the spirit. It's all about me. I got to serve me. That's not the serving that he's asking you to do. You have to die daily. You're not here to serve you. You're here to serve others and die. The word of God says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the way this way leads to where? Destruction or death. It feels good to take care of me. And God's saying, but that's not the way I called you to go. I called you to serve others. I called you to be a servant unto me. When I say do it, obedience, quick, 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 quick. Those of you that have kids, you know what it feels like when your kids don't respond quickly. You get real upset. You think that they're the most disrespectful children there are, right? You're ready to kick them out of the house. They're only four years old because they are not listening to me. And you say, come here. And they just look at you like, come here. 
and then you get upset because they're not being obedient. What do you think God is doing? You're a servant of the Most High God. What do servants do? Thank you. And if they don't serve, what do you do with the servant? You serve them. Notice. You're out. Right? We have gotten so comfortable with serving God. Serving God. We fooled ourselves to believe that it's okay not to serve. Why? Because the wrath of God and the anger of God is not suddenly. But he says, you know what? The wheat and tare will grow together. And then when it's time, I will separate. But because you look like the wheat, but you're acting like and you really are terror. Terror. You're growing up looking like the fellow Christian beside you. So you feel comfortable. But the real purity of your heart is not really serving anybody. You're going through the motions. The Lord's looking for servants. He's looking for servants. He's looking for people who will wash people's feet. He's looking for people who will take a bowl of soup to someone's house. He's looking for someone who will just go over and give them a hug. You know what? Some of you hear things about each other. Like, she needs a hug. I need to give her a word of encouragement. You know what you do? I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. It's not in my nature. You better put that nature aside because that means you're not dead. That says you haven't died to self yet. Every one of you in this room has a word for somebody in here. Can I say that again? Every one of you has a word for somebody in here. That's part of serving when God says to go and speak to someone and you're going, it's not my style. I don't have anything to say. The Lord wants to break that off because he's looking for servants. In the book of Luke 14, it says, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. A servant has a very humble heart. Servants don't take the first position and go running ahead to go and serve themselves. They make sure everybody else is served first. They make sure somebody has something. They make sure those that they have been positioned to take care of is never lacking. You know, I watched the story of, of Saul and his servant and just this week reading on that story, how Saul went to go look for his father's donkeys and his servant went with him and Saul needed to find the donkeys, but he couldn't find them. And he got into a place where Samuel was to the city where Samuel was. And when he got there, his servant said, well, there's a man in this city who has, who's a seer. That's what they called prophets before they called them prophets. They were called seers. He said, there's a man in this city who's a seer. Why don't we go to him and ask him? He is a godly man. He knows God. He'll be able to help us. And he's the serv- he said to the servant, but I have, we have no- I have nothing. I have nothing to give him because back then you would bring a gift to the prophets, not buying them. You would just, it was just honor to honor the prophets or the seers. And he says, I don't have anything. And the word of God says, the servant said, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I got some gold still in my pocket. I'll pay for it. One who is a servant always makes sure that they have something to pour into others. It was his servant who paid his way to go see the prophet. Wow. To have a servant who's looking after you, making sure that before you need it, you know, it's, it's like some of you women, you got a purse that's like the size of a briefcase. And if I ask you for anything, you can look at it and go, yep, got it. I, I need a bobby pin. Yep, 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 got it. Right? That's why us women are so laden down. We carry, we carry the whole house in our purse. Everything is in there. You just pull things out that people are going, what? That, what, what is in there? Right? 
We got so much stuff in our purse, and that's why we don't change it so often, because we're just tired from moving all the stuff to the next purse. So we just go, just forget it, just keep one, right? You're just too tired to change it. It's too big. There's too much junk in there. But a good servant makes sure that they always have something so that they can serve. Being a steward and a servant in this element, he said, good and faithful servant. God wants to know, are you a good and a faithful servant? Some of you are good servants, but you're not faithful. Some of you are faithful, but you're not good. Does that make sense? You're good. She's so good, but you won't be faithful to show up for prayer meeting. Ouch. Dion. Leave me alone. I'm good. But you won't be faithful. You won't be faithful to give. Mm. She's going too close. I need to, where's the back door? Why is it at the front? I can't even sneak out. <laughs> Some of you are faithful, but you're not good. You'll show up to everything. Why? Because it's a routine. You're faithful to be there. Why? Because you're religious. Right? Y'all, you understand what I'm saying? Because you're religious. So you're faithful, but that doesn't mean you're good. But he says, good and faithful servant. He called those two. You're good and faithful. There must be both to be a servant of God. You better be good and be faithful of what he's called you to do. But you can't keep going, I'm good, and that's good enough. That's not. In the book of Philippians, the word of God says, do not look out for your own personal interests. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, through, who, who although he ex existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. As a servant, you have to come to a place where you say, I'm going to die to myself. You have to die to yourself. Because, see, the thing is, as a servant, your master is going to ask you to do things that are uncomfortable. They're gonna, he's going to ask you to stay up late because he's up late. And you're tired, but the master's still up. He's going to ask you to feed him when you are exhausted. And you're going to have to feed him. And when I'm talking about that, I mean to feed others. It is a sacrifice to be a servant. Because you have to lose your identity. And you have to walk according to what your master says. I believe in this next season, the Lord is, as he's speaking to us about, how do I serve you, God? How am I serving you, God? Am I a good servant only? Or am I a faithful servant, religious only? I want to be a good and faithful servant. That you say, well done, welcome in. It's very hard sometimes to speak to people about when you see them and you know that they're not really serving, they're just going through the motions. And watching people come to church, and this is a hard statement, but it's gonna be on this because I'm talking about serving, because I want you all to become servants of the Most High God, not by title, not by title, but real servants. Because God isn't looking at what you're telling other people you are. He's watching what you're really doing. But it's very hard sometimes to watch people and they're saying, I serve God, but you see no evidence of it. You've got Christian friends like that. Or maybe the person beside you, don't look at them. Don't look at them, I said, don't look at them. And you're going, you know what, you say you're Christian, but I don't see you serving or doing anything that would resemble Christ. And you know what we do? We tolerate it. And we pat them on the back and go, praise God. And we have these little shallow conversations with them when we know they're not really serving God and we won't even correct it 
Do you know God's called you to bring correction? If you know the truth, the truth will what? Okay, so why aren't you setting people free? Why are you not setting free those that you know by saying, bro, bro listen, I'm watching what you're doing. That's not, how, that's not what the word of God says you should be doing. I just want to bring it to your attention. You need to save your own soul because if you don't, the Bible says, that's frightening that you're watching Christians be Christians but not be Christians and you don't say anything because you're tolerating it. It's a little scary, right? That we got a bunch of fake people in church. This bad message, Dion. They claim to be children of the Most High God, but they're not servants. You can't be a child of God and not be a servant. God is looking for servants in this season. Here I am, God. I asked you all to put your hand up before and you all did. Right? You all did. That was you saying, I'm, I'm, I'll do what you want, God. I'm going to die to self. And let me tell you, dying to self is not easy. It isn't. Because everything inside of you, you wrestle against flesh and spirit. It's a tug of war every single day. I want to do what God wants me to do, but my flesh doesn't want me to get up and pray. A servant cannot say, I'm not getting up at three in the morning when the master says, wake up. Or else you're going to be served. Right? Right? But how easy is it for you to say to your master, it's three o'clock, pull the comforter back over. Quite easy, right? There is no greater master than him. There is no greater Lord than him. The Lord is asking for us to be obedient. He's asking for us to come into full obedience to the calling that he's placed on our lives. God is looking for fruitfulness in this next season. And the Spirit of the Lord would say to this house, even to this very house, that I've called you to be a people set apart and separated for me in this next season. I've called you to be a people that will hear my voice and move quickly. I've called you to be a people who will continue to run when I say run, stop when I say stop, jump even when I say to jump off of levels that you think are too high. And the Lord would say to you, I will reward you in the season and I will comfort you in the times of sorrow. But know this, that I have called you for this moment in this season, in this hour, to a nation that is without leadership, a nation that is without servants, a nation that is without a people who will fight for a nation. But I've called you in this season to pick up all your weapons, to pick up all of your attire for this hour, for this moment. I'm calling you to assemble yourself, gather the horses, get upon them and ride into the, into the battle. The Spirit of the Lord would say to you, I have not enslaved you. I have not called you to be slaves and I have not called you to sit down when I've called you to serve, when I've called you to be the weapons in this nation. And the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, this is the hour for you to pick up all that I have put in your hand. Many of you have laid it down. Many have put it aside. But I am saying to you, there is a better way of serving me. I'm saying to you, I have called you to come up even higher. And some of you would desire to know me greater. So if you sit at my table, I will feed you and I will give you all you need for the journey of this next assignment. And the Spirit of the Lord would say to you, would you steward your heart to search me? Would you steward your mind to worship me? Would you steward your attitude to turn to me? And the Spirit of the Lord would say, I will make you fruitful and I will make you bountiful. I will make you increase in this next season. I will make you a people who will flourish in all that you do and you're coming and you're going and no one will be able to stop you because I will set you as a people that will be one that cannot be stopped because the fervor of my spirit will be upon you. The anointing of my glory will be upon you and you will shatter you will shatter those things that stand before the nation that has been there for many years. And you will say, how did this happen so quickly? But I'm looking for servants and I'm looking for those that will stand in and assemble themselves in this now season. And they will call themselves the violence of the Lord. They will call themselves those who have been appointed by God. They will not look to the left or to the right, but they will indeed go forward as a troop that cannot be stopped. Because I have placed before you those weapons that you will need to complete this battle 
battle. Know that I have not left you alone. Know that I did not leave you alone. But many thought I was not in the battle with you. Many thought that I had walked aside and I was given you over to your enemy. But it was for a season that I allowed it. It was to fashion you and to restore you. It was to strengthen you and build you up that I allowed you to be sold into your enemy's hand. But now this is the season that I am calling forth those who are considered the remnant, those who are considered the mighty, those who are considered the fervent, those who are considered those who will carry the presence of my glory, those who will determine they will not sleep, they will not allow themselves to be weary, they will push through the battlefield in this next hour, and I, the Lord, will give you the land, and I will give you the destinies that you have seen in the past that I spoke to you about, and if you will continue to be faithful, I will be faithful unto you. So watch now as you pick up the weapons that I have given to you, for many of you have had them stored away. I'm telling you now, I will call out to you and I will ask of you, go and retrieve what you have put down. It is now the season and the time to bring forth those weapons that you have hidden and bring them out because I am requiring them. If they do not come out, I will call another and then I will call another and then I will call another until one hears me. But I'm calling this people in this hour to now assemble yourself as the servants of the most high God. For I have a purpose and a calling on you to complete in the land. Though it may look like you are small, I have placed an army behind you that is greater than what you have ever seen before. Though it may seem that you don't have all that you need in this hour, I have placed before you a table that has all that you need for the journey. And though it may seem that you are not fully prepared and trained, I will equip you in the battle and your arms and your feet will run and move at a swiftness that you have never experienced. You will pick up weapons and know how to handle them as though one who was trained for years. You will run as though one who has been trained in track for years and you will take over the enemy and you will overtake him and you will pursue him and you will take him down because I, the Lord your God, am now in your midst and I have called you as a people for this moment, this hour, this season. And I would say to you, get ready for the revival. You have heard of it. You have been feeling it. You have even sensed the stirring in the air. And it is not just by accident. It is not by accident you have sensed the various things that have been shifting atmospherically. It is my movement over this nation, over this land, over this country. And I am doing it in a people that is ready. I am raising up fire bands across this nation. I'm raising up those who have decided that they will be a beacon for my work and for my purpose. And those that have decided I, they will not be content in this hour to do what they desire, but they have purposed in their heart to be militant, to be vigilant, to be violent on my behalf. They will no longer determine that their person personalities and their position is based off of what has been told to them, but their identity now will be known as the children of the Most High God who are violent and have been called for this purpose. So watch as I stir up, as I raise you up, as I continue to lift you in this next season, as you surrender to me, I will indeed draw you unto me. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, even over these people right now, God. I thank you for the awakening that is taking place, God. I know, Father, that you're raising many. We're not the only ones that you're stirring the fire and stoking the fire and blowing on. But God, may we not drop this moment. May we not miss this visitation. May we not, Father God, and say that we're too tired, say that we're too weary, say that we don't have enough for the journey, Father. May we walk into this next season, oh, Father, that you're calling us into. May we be a beacon in the nation, in the province, in the city, in the towns, oh, God, in our workplace. May we be violent and vigilant in this next moment, Father. So I thank you, Father God, for your spirit and your anointing that is on this house and those that would come in. Father, we're expecting for angels to walk through the doors. We're expecting, oh, Father God, for angels to sit among us. We're expecting them to walk in and we think that they are guests, God, but not know that they're here to entertain us, oh, Father God, and to sit in our presence, Father. I'm asking God for the manifestation of the glory of God and the signs of God to be in this season with us, God. We're looking for, oh God, to be the revival that starts in the nation, oh God. Start it in us, oh God. Release it in us, oh God. May we surrender to the word that you 
have given to us tonight, oh Father God. May we surrender and be willing to go where you call us to and no longer stand back, oh Father, and decide that we cannot go because we're not equipped or fully pro provided for for this season. So Lord God, I declare and decree over this body of people, even now in the name of Jesus, would you begin to thrust them out, oh God, into the purposes and plans that you have for them? Would you begin, oh Father God, to declare and decree what was spoken over them before time began? Would you, oh Father God, stir up again the giftings that's in them already, God? Would you revive them this day, Father God? Would you cause them to lay hands on the sick and say them healed, Father God? Would you cause them, oh Father God, to speak to the dead and they raise up, oh God? Would you cause them, oh Father God, to deliver, oh Father God, the oppressed, oh Father God? Would you awaken a nation, oh Father God, a people that's ready, oh God, a people that's fierce and violent, oh Father God, a people, oh Father God, that says we will no longer, Father God, stand by and watch a nation being raped and violated by the enemy, but may they take it by force, oh God, this nation in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, oh God, that we are surrendering to the calling that you've called us to do for this nation, for this hour. It is for a, such a time as this moment you have placed us in the earth. May we know that you're not done with the purposes you placed in us, oh God. So in Jesus' name, stir up, fan us up, oh God. Revive us and heal us and restore us and deliver us, oh God, so that we can be, oh God, the weapons of yours in your hand in this nation, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. For some of you, your God is putting a new assignment on you tonight. Some of you, God is putting a new assignment on you tonight. It's a new assignment. There's some of you that need to go and retrieve weapons that the Lord has said that you put aside, you put down, you put them down, you put them down a long time ago. And the Lord is saying, you better go and pick them up again. If you don't pick them up, God will give it to another to use it. Don't let him have to find somebody else. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss your visitation. Don't miss this. You're not too old and you're not too young. You're purposed by God. Father God. Jesus. God's not looking for spectators in this next season. He's looking for people that will run out into the battle. My God. Jesus. I just release that over you if you want to receive that in the name of Jesus. An assignment, a new assignment. God, I'm not going to go back to where I was. As Matt just said earlier, we can't go back to where you were. You can't go back. You cannot go back. You must go forward. You must go forward. You must go forward now. It's about going forward. Shit, I'm a son. I believe God's going to deliver some of you guys still over this next couple of weeks as we gather on Saturday nights. There's going to be great deliverance happening. Some of you think you don't need to be delivered, but some of you, I can see the demons on you. You need to be delivered. But you're still struggling with oppression. You're still struggling with family curses. You're still struggling with things that you opened up and you thought they were not opened. You're still struggling with entertainments that you had prior to serving God that came in and they still are there tormenting you and making you struggle. You're still struggling. And the Lord is saying, I want to deliver you from all oppression. Thank you, Father. Get ready for what's coming. I don't know if you can feel it, but I can feel it. Get, we're in the last days. You have the last baton. You're on the last leg around the track. It's been hand. The word of God says that behold a great cloud of witness. You know what that, who that crowd is? 
That's those who have gone on before us that went on and they're standing there going, if we had the Holy Ghost, you know what we would have done? And they're cheering you on going, come on. You can do great, mighty things. We didn't even have the Holy Ghost. Those prophets of old, we didn't even have the Holy Ghost. Look what we did. We, if we had had the Holy Ghost, what would we have done? And they're cheering you on to do, and, and they're watching. Are you going to take this last lap? They've handed you the baton. Are you going to run and finish the race? That's the only assignment you've got finish the race. That's it. Some of you have stopped on the race. Some of you got stopped. You, some of you said, I'm too old. You're not too old. God doesn't have old people. I'm just telling you, he doesn't. Because if I even ask you, even if you're seven years old in this place, you'll tell me, I still feel like I'm 16. God doesn't have old people. The word of God said Caleb in his latter years said that he was stronger than he was 40 years before. That means you must be a Benjamin Button. You must go backwards and get stronger. Right? In your latter years, it should be greater. You shouldn't be going, I'm slowing down. I'm speaking to my seniors. Don't tell me you're slowing down. Don't slow down. Don't slow down. Don't slow down. You're in the prime of your life. You haven't hit 80 yet. Ask Moses. Ask Abraham. You haven't even hit 80 yet. You're still young. And God still wants to use you. You're not done. You're not done. You're not done because as a generation, you need to pass the baton on to you. You're not done because what you've experienced, you need to disciple the next disciples. You're still on assignment. So may we be the servants that God wants us to be in the earth. You've got someone that God wants you to serve. And he wants you to be the best servants. As you bow your head right now, we're going to do our offering. Thank you, Father. I just want you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. I just want you to hear what he's saying to you about giving. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, your word declares that if we give, it will be given unto us. And not only will it be given, it will be pressed down. It will be shaken up, pressed down. And then you declare that it will be running over. That when you give to us, you give us good gifts. And we know that you've given us good gifts. The word of God says you stood at the offering and you watched as everyone put their funds in. But you stopped at the little widow and said she gave more than everybody else. It wasn't about what she could afford. It was about what she actually couldn't afford. That she saw that she wanted to give and serve. I ask, oh Lord God, you speak to us about our giving, that it is a form of serving the kingdom. It isn't, it shouldn't be, it mustn't be a task. It mustn't be a burden, but it should be done with joyfulness of heart. And I'm asking, oh Lord God, as you speak Holy Spirit to each person, would you allow them to receive what you have stored up for them that could actually be held back because they haven't sown? The word of God says you give seed to the sower which means you give increase to the sower. So I'm asking, oh Lord God, that as they begin to sow, as they release seeds that they may even feel like, I can't afford this seed, but God, would you let them realize that if they drop that seed, you'll multiply the seed to a greater that will produce even more seeds. I'm asking you to remove the fear that the enemy tells the children of God, don't give. You've given too much. People don't need you to do that. Father God, I'm asking that you just speak to their hearts. May they give because the Holy Spirit has told them to and give to the volume that the Holy Spirit has told them to. And I ask then, Lord God, would you come in 
And would you pour back into them, forgiven into the kingdom and the work of the kingdom. We commit all that we're given right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, back to you. Would you take it and would you multiply it? May we be good servants in our giving. We want to see the increase is what we give to you to come back. So bless this offering, tithes, in Jesus' name. I'll give you some time. I'm going to get our, um, our, our offering ladies with the bucket. If you can come stand up here. I want to just play something there, Shriva. Hallelujah. If you guys can real quick, please, real quick. They're going to come up here. And I just want you guys to, if you gave on your phone, you've got the QR codes, you've got the text. Uh, e-transfer and um, you can do the QR code if you guys just come right up here please and just stand right up here if you've given on your phone I want you to come up here and I want you to tap the baskets I want you to act like you are sowing your seed okay and if you want an envelope just raise your hands one of the ladies will get the envelope for you if you do it oh are they at the chairs envelopes are at the chairs so I just want you to come up when you're ready. Just come up and tap the basket. If you gave it via your phone, just tap the basket to release your seed. God, I'm releasing it. It's done. It's done. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to close in just a moment here. Whenever you're ready, you can come up and do it. Just open. All, the, the offering is open to you. Whenever you're ready, you can do it. Right now, we're in the middle of doing a, a fundraiser, as you all know. Aren't you guys, don't you guys love this place? Isn't this beautiful? I want you to bless this house and literally, when literally, for allowing us to be here during this season. I want you to touch the chairs and thank God for this house and begin to just say, God, would you bless this house? Bring increase to this house. Amen. Bring increase to this house for loving on us to allow us to be here, uh, which is just, a, 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 you're all comfortable, right? Don't get too comfortable. I don't want you to get too comfortable. You go, oh, the seats are great. I don't want to get up and worship. You better get up and worship, okay? But I want you guys to really seriously bless this house, but I also have to ask you, would you please honor this house? It's not ours. We're guests in this house. So I would ask that you please don't bring food in, okay? Please don't bring any food in into into the sanctuary here. So we don't want anything spilt on the carpet. We don't want you leaving any mess on their chairs. I would ask that you act like it's your house. No, let me just say it again. Forget it. Because some of you may have a messy house. <laughs> don't act like it's your house for some of you. Don't, don't do that. Act like you're visiting the house of God. How about that? Okay? Act like you're visiting the house of God. And I would just ask you to please be, be, you know, like be mindful. Even when you go in the bathroom, if you see something on the floor or something, just pick it up. Because we want to honor this house. If we honor this house, God will give us our house. Right? Because he's watching how we take care of somebody else's house. So let's take care of this house really well. I'm just asking you guys uh, that you please do um, be very mindful. Okay? And if, you, if you've if got Kleenex, pick it up. Don't Don't leave anything behind, please. And, and once again, bless this house as you leave and touch the chairs and thank God for it. We are going to be here every Saturday and this is where we're going to be. Please bring a friend with you next week. Bring someone who needs to experience God. Just tell them you need to be here. Okay. And for those of you who didn't have the courage to come up for prayer, I pray that you get the courage next week. Okay. Just keep coming until the courage comes. Okay. Keep coming. Um, we're doing a fundraiser right now called raise the house because we are for the month of september we're giving we're asking for we're, we're believing that there will be people that will catch the vision that god has for that we're carrying for the nation of canada and that is to purchase our own building where it will be both a church and it will be a training center for the prophetic it will be a prophetic school and we're wanting, we want you to speak to the Lord 
and ask him how you can contribute. Some people have asked, can I give, you know, it in small segments that totals a thousand? You're more than welcome to. Or can I just give it at once and just sow? And I would ask that you just listen to the Holy Spirit and sow into it. It's good ground, I promise you, it's good ground. We want to build up the kingdom of God. But we're looking for a thousand people who will just commit to a thousand dollars and sow. It's easy for you to get on a plane and go to Florida and spend a thousand dollars for a hotel and a right? So easy, right? I would just ask, you know, many times the Lord speaks to me and I, I'm, I'll say, I need this done, I need that done. I'll say to my husband, I need this done in the house. And then God checks me and goes, what about my house? What about my house? And it's so easy for us to give to our own house and forget the house of God. And the word of God speaks of that. That those of you that live in padded homes, but the house of God is torn up and it has nothing. Sometimes we, we center on ourselves. But I would just ask that you speak to the Holy Spirit and just hear what he's saying. You can give a thousand, you give two thousand, you give ten thousand, you can give ten million if you want. We'll, we'll take that too. But we want to build a place for the place for God to come. And we want to come into that place. The Lord's already shown me the building a couple times. And I know we've got a building coming, but I really, we need your help. We need your help. Okay? And if you know someone that just wants to give and you go, hey, let me tell you about a ministry that's trying to build a church and a prophetic training center. You need to sow into it. If you want your business to be blessed, sow into it. We've got testimonies to tell of people that have given and what God has already done because they've given into this ministry. So I just want to encourage you. That's all of September. We will be talking about raise the house. All of September, you've got time to, to, to give towards that. Make God Famous is coming up. Make God Famous, 23rd. Thank you, ladies. Bless you. 23rd. And this time, it's not just Canada. We have the nations are doing it with us. The nations are doing it with us. There's other nations that are joining with us. England will be joining with us also. And which is really powerful because we, it's come out of this house that we're now stirring people to make God famous. So you're going to be seeing that all over. If you want a t-shirt, Jackie has got t-shirts out. She's got t-shirts, Car Carly. Get your t-shirt, make God famous. You want to have it for that, uh, the 23rd of, of uh, September. Um, and also, I want you to keep your, in, your, in, in mind also, Occupy is coming out. Apostle Tommy will be here. Dr. Sharon Stone will be here. This is going to be pretty powerful. You do not want to miss this. Okay? You do not want to miss this. Okay? Occupy 2023 is coming. You're going to want to get your ticket for it. So there's lots more announcements. I'm not going to tell you all of them because your heads will be spinning. But I just want to bless each one of you. Is there anything else I need to share with them, guys? Am I missing anything? No? Uh, no, that, that's that they, they'll get that on the announcements. There's all those. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we've got going on. So do follow us on Telegram, on our Instagram, uh, on our Facebook, um, everything else. Follow us. Chapter one. Chapter one uh, on the, what date was that? Sorry, chapter one was the third third Saturday okay the third Saturday if you we we want to we want to solidify who are members we gave that first introduction uh, a couple months ago and, and introduced what we're looking at and shared a bit about the vision but on that third the third Saturday of every month is called chapter one where it is for those that want to be members here and what it's going to be a full day we'll provide lunch for you and we'll have a full teaching of the vision of this house at the end of it, we will assign you to one of our leaders. Because I really do not believe that people should just come to church and sit. You need to be active. You need to be doing something in the house of God. So you will be signed at the end of that session with somebody. And you will go out from there to be in ministry doing something. Okay? And then the next week, we will acknowledge you and bring you up and as members of this house. So... Chapter one on the third, it'll be here. It'll be at 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. with a lunch that's going to be provided. Um, and we will go over the membership. Join us. If you want to be a member and support what God is doing in this ministry, come join with us. Hold our hands up to do it. Could you do that? 
Yeah, hold our hands up. Amen. Even the children are saying yes. Come on. Thank you. Why don't you guys stand? Come on. I want you to turn to the person to your left. Person to your left. <laughs> you don't have a left person, then turn to your person. You don't know your left from their right? Turn to the person to your left. And I want you to say to them, you are powerful. You carry the power of God. And you're about to do. Did you all say it? All of, and you're about to do, sorry. Supernatural things for him. Get ready. Your life's about to change. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Go ahead and just greet someone on your way out. Please come back next week. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Have a good night. Who's my girl?